Are you a serious dinosaur collector that wants to make better buying decisions? If so, this is the show for you. Welcome to episode 23 of the Dinosaur Review Show. Today we're going to be going over the Tyrannosaurid family. With this being a family, George, is the fossil record consistent on all of these? It is very consistent. In fact, we have a lot of complete, well, semi-complete skeletons of these Tyrannosaurids that we're about to review today. So the info is good. And I see you're wearing your Christmas sweater, George. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes, this is my uh, T-Rex Christmas sweater. It even has a little pocket for secret dinosaur storage. Oh, yeah. So, so if you're watching this in July, the sweater probably doesn't apply, but hey, we're going with it. So today we're going to look at all models from PNSO, George. Which one would you like to get started with? Let's start with the Lithronax. This is a Tyrannosaur that lived about... 80 million years ago. So Lithronax is one of the oldest Tyrannosaurids in North America, and it was very small, only about like 20 feet long. It was pretty small, probably had feathers, which this model does not have any feathers. So I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed, but see this thick muscled neck? That would have been perfect for ripping off flesh. And we see that it has that typical two finger, two clawed, Tyrannosaur hand. If you go to the foot, one interesting thing about T-Rex's feet is that they have a middle toe that is pinched near the top. This probably would have helped when they were running after prey and then they had to instantly change direction. This is something that's uh, characteristic of their ancestry because only smaller dinosaurs of the Tyrannosaur lineage had that and it carried through to their even bigger evolutionary counterparts. I like the pattern on this one. It's very spotted. Typically we see stripes on dinosaurs and there are some stripes on the on the tail. Uh, let's do a cloaca check. It checks out. There's one right there. It's a little hard to see at that angle, but it exists and it does have a mouth that opens and closes. I realize I, I opened it without saying anything at the beginning, but the inside of the mouth, very, very nice. I mean, look at the texture on that tongue. Each tooth is individually painted and at the right proportions going down has very tiny forward facing eyes, which are very important for hunting prey and a very, very good sense of smell. These guys would have been awesome at smelling prey from miles away. So I say this is a, this is a pretty good one. So you started with this one because it is the oldest fossil on the record? Yes. So I wanted to go through in chronological order, showing you the older Tyrannosaurs and seeing how they change over time. So this one has a kind of a smaller head, but we're going to see that it's going to get bigger. Okay, George, let's move on to Tristan the Gorgosaurus. Okay, so this is actually my favorite Tyrannosaurid, Gorgosaurus, because I go by George, and it sounds like George, so it's like you're saying Georgosaurus. This Tyrannosaurid had very sharp horns or crests right above the eyes. They're a lot more pronounced than they were on Lithronax, and a little bit more pronounced than they are in other Tyrannosaurids, with the exception of one, which we'll talk about later. Notice how the skull got a little bit longer in this guy than um, the Lithronax. Its jaw also opens. The inside is lined with teeth. Although it is a longer head, it is not as robust as the, um, the Lithronax. Its arms, same thing, two clawed fingers. The feet, Show that, that pinched middle toe as well. We've got a cloaca. Always good to check that your dinosaurs have cloacas. And this pattern is a little bit different. It looks kind of like a, a, a striped tapers. It's very interesting. And it has kind of like this darker shade on top, like it has a mullet. <laughs> the Gorgosaurus with a mullet. But I will say, this is probably one of the most beautiful Gorgosaurus I've seen. Look at that dainty little foot. It's just like gingerly step, stepping on the ground. <laughs> oh man. I, I like this one. I think this is my favorite one so far. Now, scale-wise, George, how would this have compared in real life to the Lithronax? So this guy would have been about 10 feet longer. Gorgosauruses were about 30 feet long. Uh, so you're approaching bigger sizes, like the size of T-Rex, which was about 40 feet long, which is big. That's the size of a school bus. So this guy is probably the size of a truck and a car parked behind each other. The fossil record for Gorgosaurus is actually one of the best ones we have for Tyrannosaurids. At the museum I work at, we have a complete uh, brain case that looks like it had tumorous growths. So these these guys uh, had, you know, cancer and diseases just like we do today. We also found that on one of the Gorgosauruses, their fibula had broken and this bone was sticking out during its life. It, it was pretty nasty. I, I don't imagine if one of your bones is sticking out of your body all day. That must have been painful and it also had another tumorous growth on its its shoulder so like this part of the dinosaur was swollen with a bone mass i understand how you would have found the 
broken bone in the leg, but how would you have found a cancerous mass because that would not have fossilized, would have it? So that is a good point. It only fossilizes if it was cancer in the bone. Unless you had very good tissue preservation, the tissue preservation in dinosaurs is rare, but we're starting to get better at finding it. It turns out there were a lot of dinosaurs that had preserved skin, but we would just prep that away. So I do some prep work where I have to be very careful not to remove soft tissue. And I have found some skin impressions myself. Early paleontologists didn't think that stuff like that would preserve. So they didn't come across it a lot. Mm. And for this guy, we did find the tumorous growths in the arm, the tumorous growths in the in the brain case. So let's take a look at Cole, the Depletosaurus. I said that wrong, didn't I? <laughs> yep, Depletosaurus. You want to redo it or? Nope, That's fine. Okay. let's go with it. These, these dinosaurs are so alike, guys. You have no idea because Depletosaurus lived at the same time as Gorgosaurus about 70 million years ago. But let's take a closer look. So to really see their differences, you have to come even closer. The skull of Gorgosaurus was a lot more petite than the Spletosaurus. And the Spletosaurus also had less pronounced bra horns than Gorgosaurus. See how much smoother they are, they are and less forward facing? Teeth are beautifully sculpted and uh, painted. The tongue looks like it is wet. Very good detail. Similar arms. Now, even though they look small on these dinosaurs, they were in proportion bigger than T-Rexes in proportion to their body. And see, this was also stepping daintily. I like this. You know, dinosaurs don't always have to be in a dynamic active pose running after their prey, but you know, we do have that pinched inner toe and a cloaca. They're pretty consistent with that. I, I like We know a lot about Despletosaurus because of Gorgosaurus. They're both dinosaurs that lived at the same time, and they're closely related. But the difference is that Despletosaurus was taller than Gorgosaurus, but Gorgosaurus was chunkier. This uh, Despletosaurus would have also been about 30 feet long, similar to Gorgosaurus. There have even been debates about them being the same species or uh, the same genus actually, not the same species, same genus, but different species, but that's still up for debate. It hasn't been debunked yet. So we have both the Spedosaurus and Gorgosaurus. I'm happy to say that I've worked on both. Okay, George, let's look at the fourth figure, Wally the Albertosaurus. This is Albertosaurus, and this one is a little bit different than the other ones we've seen so far. If you remember, these are all North American Tyrannosaurids. The other three were in the continental United States, but Albertosaurus is named after the region in Alberta, Canada. So you find this one a bit more north. It also has a jaw that opens and closes like the other ones, but notice its snout is a lot more narrower. This guy was probably more built for speed and agility and ate a different kind of prey. Albertosaurus also has pretty sharp forward-facing horns, uh, similar to Gorgosaurus, but not as pronounced. We do have the two-fingered claws, and then we do have a cloaca. Now for Albertosaurus, they had kind of like these nose ridges that are very well shown and represented in this figure that you don't really see in Tyrannosaurus until like T-Rex. The other Tyrannosaurus had pretty smooth noses. Uh, there are other Tyrannosaurus in Asia that would have had these uh, bumps like Alleryamus, but we haven't reviewed that one yet. This Albertosaurus lived more recently, about 70 million years ago. So we moved from 80 million to 75 to 70 million. So we're traveling in time. We're getting closer to T-Rex. T-Rex appeared about 68 million years ago. So this is the closest relative of T-Rex in time. So that's a pretty neat little fact. This one has a combination of stripes and spots that I really like. So this is a, this is a good figure. Okay, George, normally we would do mug shots. So let's just take a look at the four heads together. And is there anything that jumps out at you as differentiating these figures as one is better than the other? Ooh, that's a great question. The Lithronax has a boxier head, which is really good for a strong bite force. So it probably ate a lot more heavier, more robust prey, like cer early Ceratopsians or even Hadrosaurs. The other three have much narrower heads, which we see later on in T-Rex have a combination of a long head, but also a boxy head. The thing that stands out the most to me are the Gorgosaurus and the, the Albertosaurus horns. They're really sharp on these figures, and I like figures that don't shy away from having sharp features because as a collector, I don't want my dinosaurs to be baby-proofed. So that's a personal preference. So I'm not hearing any real inaccuracies. Since these were all made by PNSO, one would expect them to all be fairly accurate. But I'm not hearing anything that really eliminates one of them in terms of scientific accuracy. Yeah, these are all pretty consistent. But I will say something that may put them on the fence. All of them. None of them have 
lips that completely cover all of their teeth. I'm a lip guy. I like dinosaurs that have lips when they close their, their mouths, their teeth stay in. But I will admit they look they do look cooler with uh, teeth sticking out of their, their mouths. But that's more of a crocodilian trait. Now, you may come after me in the comments, but it also makes paleo art easier. And if I do some paleo art, so if anything, I'd have to take points off for the teeth sticking out. Okay, George, decision time. They're all fairly similar in price. If you could only pick one, which one are you going to add to your collection? Uh, uh, I'm going to try to decide this without much bias because I do like Gorgosaurus a lot. But it is a good Gorgosaurus. But I might go for the Albertosaurus. Because the Albertosaurus has a more dynamic stride. So you can see its, its legs are further apart. And you can see the bottom part of the foot that's leaning back and this is a good walking posture that we see in birds today um, the others just have you know that little dainty foot being lifted up which which is nice and all it's probably better for stability but i like a good dynamic pose um especially if it's not running it's just walking it's like a nice stride instead of about to begin to walking so that's why i would pick the albertosaurus Okay, so George has decided that none of these are scientifically inaccurate and any of those would be great additions to your collection, but if he could only pick one, he would pick the Albertosaurus. All right, that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed the content, please give us a like and subscribe, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.